People are always saying, be yourself, be the real you unapologetically, follow your heart relentlessly. And it might seem truly wholesome and even simple at that point, but it's so much more than just that. Anyway, I'm Ishvi, and today I say, let's get behind all the bright and the hopeful. Let's get to the struggles, to the hardship. Let's get real and talk about how difficult it can be to just be you. Today, I want to tell you the story of one of my favorite swim meets. That is CBSE South Zone in the year 2018. And I'll walk you through my imperfect journey getting there. So a couple of months before this meet, I was diagnosed with something called scapular dyskinesis. Now what that meant was that this part of my shoulder right here had been displaced. It was starting to wing out and all those surrounding muscles were weakened. And it hurt. So much so that my doctor actually asked me to stop training for a couple of months and I had to do all these rehab exercises instead. And he, he actually considered me fortunate. Fortunate that we were able to identify and diagnose this at such an early stage. But to me, to me this was devastating. I was finally on track with metal timings. I knew that if only I could work really hard these next couple of months, I would be in a great place in time for championship season. But now they were telling me that I wasn't going to be able to train at all. And just going back to training later that evening, talking to my coach about what the doctor had said, and just seeing him sadly nod his head as, as he realized what that was going to mean for me, it just made all of that so much more real. And the next couple of weeks, I was going to training with resistance bands in my backpack instead of swim gear. And I was inside doing all of those strength and mobility exercises while my team was out there training, working hard like I was supposed to be doing. And all of that just made me feel so lonely. You know, all of it just felt so wrong. And soon enough, even recreational swimming became too painful for me. I had to stop going to the pool altogether. And this meant that I wasn't seeing my teammates either. And my teammates, they're like family to me. So not having their support, not knowing that they're with me and that we're all in this together, well, I was demotivated, to say the least. And this, this lack of motivation, it spread into all these other aspects of my life. I was losing focus, not just in my workouts, but also in my classes. I was constantly surrounded by all of these negative emotions, and this was distressing, not only to me, but to everybody around me, my parents, my friends, my teachers, everybody who was seeing me on a daily basis. I was losing those very values of hard work, of perseverance, of determination, and, and these are the first three words that would come to anyone's mind if they were ever asked about me. I was losing myself. But, and almost as if placed there by magic, really, I found Michael Phelps' autobiography. Little known fact, Michael Phelps was actually injured before the 2008 Olympics, where he would go on to win eight gold medals. Now, this is the highest number of Olympic goals won by a single athlete at an Olympics. And just reading about him, his struggle with the injury, it made me realize, it gave me that little bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, all that I'd hoped for this year. Maybe that wasn't too far out of my reach. And you know, just the thought of recovering and being able to swim with my team again, all of that helped me set up this strict rehab routine. And as painful as it was, it soon showed me improvements. I was back to training soon, and I was able to reclaim those timings quite easily, you know, all my previous timings, but the meet was coming up, and I was still swimming with tapes on my back that were helping keep that scapula in place. And timings-wise, I wasn't anywhere close to where I wanted to be. But all I could really do at that point was, you know, work really hard those next couple of weeks and hope that it'll all pay off. Now, this swim meet was in a high school in Andhra Pradesh. Now, I remember one of the first things that I did as soon as I got there was try and see if I could change my events. Now, I was supposed to be swimming the backstrokes and the 100-meter breaststroke. Now, the backstrokes were my main events, I was okay with that, but the 100-meter breaststroke, I'd never raced that before. 
This was also my first year in the under 17 category. This meant that 14-year-old me was going to be racing swimmers two years older and faster than I was. This is also my second CBSC South Zone. The previous year, I didn't win anything. So I was really, really determined to you know, put up a good performance at this meet, at least as well as I could do, considering that I wasn't fully recovered yet. But the thing is, um, the officials, they couldn't do anything about me wanting to change my events. So I decided to you know, just focus on my main events. And I did exactly that. Over the next two days, I did really well on those backstrokes, really crushed those personal best timings, blew my coach's mind. And, you know, I got those, uh, you know, I got my podium finishes. That's what I wanted. I got bronze medals in both. But what I really, really wanted was a gold or a silver because that's what took you to the nationals. And I wanted to make the national team with the rest of my friends. But, you know, I didn't think that was in the cards for me, considering that all I had left was this 100-meter breaststroke. And I didn't really know how to race that. <laughs> all the same, I was going to give, my, give it my very best the next day. And so the next morning, I'm standing in the lineup with everybody I'm going to be racing with that day. And I'm looking around, and I'm seeing that I'm one of the smallest, one of the youngest, least breast experienced breaststrokers in that lot. And I couldn't help but feel inferior. And I'm not the most competitive person. I'm not the kind who will rise in front of a towering challenge, you know? It, it's more likely, in honesty, that this fear of competition, it would crush me. And it would have if I didn't remind myself at that point that, you know, this was a new event. I could just have fun with this, go into it stress-free. And so for the finals later that evening, I was in third place. Now, the two girls who had gone faster than me, they were a full four seconds in front of me. Now in the swimming world, four seconds, that's a huge, huge gap. And even with my pre-injury best timings, you know, I was nowhere close. But, you know, I didn't have that pressure to win a medal. I didn't need that. I had already fulfilled that good performance quota for that event, for that meet. And somehow that made racing two older, faster girls a pleasant challenge. And now the race. So after the first half, I'm only half a stroke behind the leader. Turning into the second half, I'm telling myself, you know, I'm going to start to give this all I have right now. No more saving up for the last lap, which is actually the safe thing to do. And I could tell myself this. I could, you know, push my limits like that. Because for once, I wasn't feeling that pressure to perform, that anxiety. And did it pay off? <laughs> because the last, towards the last 15 meters of the race, I could actually see an empty wall in front of me, nearly within my reach. And mind you, at this point, I couldn't feel any parts of my body. My, my arms were numb, my legs barely holding on, but I kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, until finally I had two hands on the wall first by a full four seconds, and with that, I'd won my first ever South Zone gold medal. <laughs> Okay, so over there, you should be able, this is me turning into my last lap. I'm the one closest to the camera, the one in the blue suit, blue cap. And you'll see me start to take a lead here. The two girls uh, beside me, they were the first and the second seat, the two faster girls in the heat. <laughs> and you know, as I got out of the pool, um, you know, I grabbed my towels, I could see my mom, I could see my friends standing on the side cheering for me, and, and I could feel all that self-doubt that I was subjecting myself to earlier. You know, earlier in the day, I was telling myself things like, you'll never be good enough for a gold medal. Those bronze medals you got earlier, that's all you really deserve. You're never going to do well on an event that you've never raced before. And you're truly kidding yourself if you think you're going to see yourself on that podium later with those girls you raced in the morning. I could feel all of that just evaporate. I was showing myself that I shouldn't be putting myself down in the face of competition or adversity, but embracing that challenge to grow, to become better than I thought possible. And it was just one of those moments where, you know, all my hard work was paying off and it just felt so fulfilling. But it's important to realize that it doesn't always feel this way. You're not always surrounded by so much praise and support, especially when you're pursuing something that's different from people around you. And I would know, 
being both a swimmer and a student, while pursuing, uh, like prioritizing both equally, I never really fit in anywhere. And when that happens, things like self-doubt, things like peer pressure, things like anxiety, those things really start to get to you. And it can be really hard to stay true to yourself at that point. And it still is for me to this very day. But I can tell you today that I am proud and I am grateful for those differences of mine that I've been able to embrace, for those imperfections of mine that I've been able to embrace, and for everything that I've been able to achieve along this journey, which has culminated into me while getting into Stanford. <laughs> and, you know, just being a high school senior, going through the admissions process, I realized that no, my profile, it doesn't come anywhere close to that of the perfect student that society teaches you, even nurtures you to look up to. But that was okay, because what they're looking for, what most importantly you should be looking for, is to strive to be the best version of yourself, to embrace those differences as a furnace to refine you, to embrace your imperfections as a fire to forge you, to chart for yourself a path for personal growth, one that conforms to your and only your vision of your future self. And I'll tell you again, it's not going to be easy. And I'll give you another example, okay? So me standing on this stage right here, talking to all of you today, well, this is me embracing what has been for the longest time my greatest fear and weakness, my most debilitating imperfection, public speaking. <laughs> And, and therefore, this is proof for you that, that these weaknesses you think you're born with, they don't have to stay that way. These are things you can work on. These are things you can overcome. And so we've talked about a fear of failure. We've talked about fear of competition. We've talked about how a lack of experience can get to you. We've talked about setbacks like the injury I told you about earlier. We've talked about staggering weaknesses. And, and these are only a few of the many many obstacles that are going to stand in your way as you, as you work towards and live life as the truest version of yourself. But these are things you can overcome. These are things you can learn to embrace by yourself or with a little help. So build for yourself that support network, a community of people who push you to be better, who inspire you to be better, but better in your own way. People who help you embrace those perfect imperfections of yours. And with that support, most importantly, faith in yourself. Go after this person you want to see yourself becoming with everything that you've got, and trust me, it'll be worth it. Thank you.